Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining and being here with us. Um, this week's edition of the Humpty Hiatus is in the evening, which is a little bit, a little bit different for me. Um, and um, this is our final conversation for November, which is kind of crazy. Uh, the theme for the month has been from uh, body trust core elements, and we've been talking and focusing on how to externalize uh, shame, blame, and bias. Uh, tonight here with us, we have Sydney Bell, who is a local friend of mine and a practitioner here in Kitchener-Waterloo region. Uh, Sydney's business is called Embracing the Body Divine, which I absolutely love. And she is a counselor and a body image coach. And here to share a little bit with us um, about um, what brought her to this work, why she's passionate about it, and how we can all kind of start to look at maybe externalizing some of that shame and blame in our own lives. So welcome, Sydney. Thank you, Dana. It's really so great to be here. And um, oh, thank you for so much. There's so much to thank you for, Dana, not only to um, uh, for being here tonight, but your patience in us getting it figured out. But even bigger than that, I throw a big kudos at you if I could right off the start for um, not only putting yourself out here and doing these videos, which I think is great, but um, I really see how you kind of reach out and and you bring others along and and look to shine the light not only on on yourself and the work that you're doing, but on on the work that others are doing. I think that's just really awesome. So. Um, I'm really glad to be a little bit of a part of that. So really, really happy to be here. So Thank just you. Gonna kick off with that. Well, thanks. And I'm crying. It's two minutes. Well, <laughs> I know. But, you know, women supporting other women and, and in this work that we're doing, it's just really so important. So um, I just think it's, it's really cool. Yeah. It is yeah. super important. And it's, um, it's the reason why I actually um started this because as 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 you know and a few of our other colleagues in this area there's not um a ton of folks doing what we're doing and spreading um the health at every size intuitive eating and um body positive message and um i just really wanted to to have there be a platform where people could come and get some of this information mm -hmm. and connect in kind of real time mm -hmm. um, while they did it. So, you know, as opposed to having a, a podcast, which I love, there's so much valuable information that you can get from them, but something also just feels distant and, and doesn't build that community in the same way. Right. And doesn't allow folks to connect in the same way. And so I really just feel like, you know, the more the more voices we are, we have mm -hmm. and the more we we kind of bond together, um, the more we can elevate the message that we're all trying to. Exactly. There. exactly. Right on, sister. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's um let's dive in. And I know a little bit about your story, but uh, other other folks don't. So if you want to share a little bit with us about kind of what um what brought you to the the work that you're doing, um, mm -hmm. if you want to dive into a little bit more of what exactly that is and what it looks like for you, and um. Yeah, why you're why you're passionate about it? So we'll see where see where that. Yeah. Well, uh, Dana, like many many folks, I think um, who come to uh, find work that they're passionate about, there's often a um, a connection of our own journey in, in that uh, is a thread into the work, and that's certainly um, the case with me um, in terms of a great focus of my work as a a social worker and a counselor. Um, you know, kind of stemming from this topic of um, body image and our relationship with our body. Um, uh, I definitely struggled, as, as many folks do, um, in terms of how I felt in relationship with my body. 
mm-hmm. and uh, caused me definitely a lot of unhappiness um, throughout the years. And um, so just uh, um, when I was in my early 30s, I decided to go back to school and uh, follow a, a calling I had to go into um, social work. And um, that's just when I really started to really work on my relationship with my body. So it's kind of two things that coalesced at the same time. And I think it was a happy, um, a, bit, a happy cross section because um, not only had I begun to do that inner healing work um, to um, in terms of my relationship with my body and all the other things that it intersects with, because it rarely just sits on its own. But uh, going to school and taking classes and starting to get uh, more critical thinking skills um, uh, along that same time. And uh, just those two things happening uh, together just really sort of blew my mind apart, I think, and um, provided a really great space for me to, um, again, not only do my own healing journey, but to, to start thinking outside myself a little bit and start thinking a little more broadly and getting excited about ways that I could support um, other people. So, um, yeah. Um, and I think, so there's a, there's a passion there that is not only kind of born out of my own experience, but um, I guess because the, um, this culture of body shame is just so widespread I mean, it's just so pervasive. It's it's just everywhere that um, I really felt um, a call to look to be um, a a force for positive change. I think that's also kind of what brings my my passion. And there's just so much unnecessary pain, I think, that, uh, you know, that we could... um, that we could not have to, not have to deal with or live with that. Um, um, and, and also, um, gosh, it's, it's more than, I mean, there's, there's a serious consequences. It's, it's not just about, oh, I have a, a little shot to my self-esteem. I mean, there's serious kind of health and life consequences too for many people when it comes to their relationship with their body. So, yeah, that's just sort of a snippet into some of the things anyway that go through my brain when I think about why I'm passionate about this work. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. um, and so there's, if you don't mind sharing a little bit about, um, you have kind of like this three, um, mm-hmm. I don't know what you want to call it, three prong or three, mm-hmm. you know, um, approach that you you bring in and you talk about in your work and i'd love if you could share about that because it's just so um helpful and 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 i find it to be really really practical and it, it resonated with me a lot well as i've been uh doing this work and um i really come to um my approach to it really has been framed in a in a in a in what I call body body sovereignty is kind of how I like to talk about it because uh, I, I feel it's um, a wonderful sort of broad term that um, encompasses all, a lot of those different elements um, when it comes to our relationship with our body, you know, um, our, our body image, um, our sort of physicality in our body, um, all those kinds of things, how we, um, our own body agency, body, body trust, as, as you do, uh, a lot of your work is framed in that sort of language of, of trust. In other words, you know, again, um, trusting your relationship with your body. And I have found that, um, uh, come to think of a path of healing, um, that is reflected in three tools that I, I really like to kind of draw on. And, um, uh, one is self-compassion. That's a sort of a really sort of foundational tool is building a practice of self-compassion. The second is uh, mindfulness, which is um, learning to kind of build uh, a greater awareness of what's actually going on in our body and the relationship of our body to the world. Mm-hmm. And the third is something called uh, discernment, which is um, something actually I thought we might end up talking Uh, a little bit more about tonight. Absolutely. I do see that as a big tool in terms of externalizing 
Um, so discernment is, um, uh, again, a bigger term um, than just sort of critical thinking, because cri but critical thinking is a big part of that, right? Uh, learning to um, have our eyes open to the influences that surround us and that are trying to convince us about how we should feel about our body. So those three, that sort of triad is a, uh, a framework I like to work within both from my own journey and then with the, the clients that I work with as well. So uh, self-compassion, mindfulness, and, and discernment. Um, I really see self-compassion and mindfulness as um, a little bit more of that inner, that inner healing work that we need to do. And then, um, and they really sort of uh, work together really well. They reinforce each other. Uh, you know, the more you build your self-compassion, the more mindful and aware that you can become. Um, but then this third element of discernment helps us sort of go out into and navigate the um, the world around us mm -hmm. because that can often be a trap that we can fall into into this work where we can kind of do all this inner work and lovely inner healing and, and that's wonderful and magnificent. But the moment we maybe step out of our bubble or out of our door and into the street and are faced with the onslaught of relatives, uh, magazines, social media, uh, we need to have tools to help us navigate all the information that is bombarding us. So I find that um, uh, developing this, um, this uh, uh, process of discernment that includes all different ways of uh, processing and gathering information, um, really helpful. So those are the... Yeah. Um, uh, was also boundaries. Right. Yeah. Which really, for me, um, a lot of a lot of those have been born out of the self compassion and the mindfulness and those practices, right. um, and learning how to um, to to be with myself, to listen, um, to to trust, and um, and to honor. Right. As well. Yeah. So you're you're. You're seeing, excuse me, <laughs> I'm battling a bit of a cough. Yeah. Um, that, uh, so you're seeing uh, setting boundaries for yourself as an act of, of self compassion. Yeah, um, as an act so, of self compassion, but then also all those elements coming into it, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And and discernment, you know, one of the boundaries, you know, actually being, you know, physical in terms of okay so what what uh, what what is coming into my space and right. is it something that um is true is it something that's helpful that's kind um that's supportive of of who I am and where where I'm at um as as a bit of a smaller piece of that discernment process as well that you were talking about navigating mm -hmm. the world right and often the first step of that is actually taking the time to really be reflective and become aware of what our, our values are um i think I, I know for me this has been the case um that we we sort of i mean we know we have values and we maybe have gut reactions to things but we don't often take the time to really sort of explore our values and sift through them and um, have a sort of a concrete awareness of them so that they can help us in our in our decision making in that discernment piece um, yeah 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 absolutely and um, are there so with within the keeping with kind of the the discernment um, piece of the triad um, are there practices um that have helped you that you've embodied um that have kind of led you a little bit um further down into investigating what this was all about and, and how you came up with this piece of the triad i like triads a lot so even within um discernment i tend to think again in another set of threes and practices that um uh, that uh, I, I explore and suggest. Um, and it's really thinking of types of wisdom, right? And a really simple way to think about it is um, uh, body wisdom, uh, soul wisdom, and mind wisdom, 
right? And because um, often when we think of critical thinking, we we think only in terms of that rational, right, um, logical, clear thinking, which is definitely an important part of it, right? Um, uh, you know, developing that that critical thinking piece, um, clarity in our in our mind and thoughts, and and uh, learning to put some structure uh, sometimes around our decision making process. Uh, that's definitely you know uh, important healthy practice to do and it's uh, for someone like me who often operates on a gut instinct level um, that's um, not necessarily maybe where I go automatically so it's been a good you know a good practice for me to you know read up on critical thinking take classes you know have to write papers and do research and all those kinds of things really helps to sharpen that critical thinking piece mm-hmm. um, there's then the, the there's um, also though our sort of more intuition and soul wisdom piece, um, and then you'll find these things. There's it's not really linear. Linear. All these things interact because definitely for me, uh, mindfulness comes in again into that intuitive piece. Where um, if I'm uh, becoming uh, more in tune with my emotions and what my emotions are telling me, that that really supports my intuitive knowledge right mm-hmm, I'm, uh, opening myself up to beauty and art that that's around me I find that opens up my intuitive wisdom um, and it's also very personal some people are drawn to you know things like uh, dream interpretation or uh, maybe um, uh, gems and stones are your thing or whatever sort of resonates for you in terms of how do you tap into your intuitive um, in your intuitive wisdom. So there's lots of different potential uh, tools there. Um, body wisdom is sort of the, the, the third one there. And again, mindfulness comes again <laughs> into a big part of it because if we really want to tap into our body wisdom, we have to be willing to live, you know, within, mm-hmm. like in our body. And it, that can be a challenge, especially for those of us who have a, a, um, a challenging relationship with our bodies. Many of us uh, tend to retreat out of them, out of our body and live in our heads. Um, so that can make it a challenge to tap into our, um, our body wisdom. And, um, but we have opportunities when we're reclaiming our relationship, say with food and exercise, are both really great um, opportunities to build those body wisdom skills. Um, say where when it comes to food, if we're looking to maybe move away from relying on outside experts and um, the latest news bites to tell us what to to eat, and instead relearn how to listen to what our body is telling us in terms of when we're hungry and what we're hungry for, um, is is a really great tool. Kind of moving towards that more mindful or intuitive eating um, process really supports developing body wisdom. And if I can say, uh, Dana, I've come across a book that I've fallen in love with. Can I share it? Absolutely. What do you Body Wisdom. It's called A Guide to Body Wisdom. Oh, nice. Yes. I just, I stumbled across it doing some research and um, I actually bought it on my Kindle because I had to have it right away and I (laughs) immediately, but I knew I had to have a physical copy to have my hands on and do the the work. So um, I tell you this, uh, I think you would really love, love this. Awesome. Uh, I can send you the information. The author is Anne Toad Hunter Brody, and um, she talks about what your mind needs to know about your body and how you can really, there's really concrete practices in this book about uh, really learning to tap into that wisdom <coughs> of the body. So, nice. yeah, so it's a awesome. really, you know, there's lots of different. Um, and of course, uh, you know, body movement in ways that feel good to you, whatever, whatever that is, you know, learning um, what uh, your body wants in terms of rest and self care. Those are other really great um, opportunities for developing body wisdom. And then all those three just really feed up into that, that our ability to um, navigate the world, that discernment kind of piece right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And if I, if I can um, kind of widen our lens a little bit, I, I feel like 
as you were saying in the beginning, right? Like body shaming is, is, is everywhere and it's so prevalent. Mm -hmm. And I can remember when I first started, um, kind of diving into healing my relationship with food and my body. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't even realize that I had, I had no process of discernment. And so, you know, things that were coming in, um, were just being assimilated, right? Like they weren't going through any sort of, um, any sort of process to kind of, um, see if, you know, this nugget is actually true or this is actually true. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it was just, you swim in the soup so much and for so long that it, we tend to forget that there might possibly be another way that we can feel about ourselves, Mm -hmm. right? There's another way that we can relate to food and our body that doesn't make us feel shameful, that doesn't make us feel like we're bad, that doesn't make us feel like we're not good enough, but in fact, we actually can (laughs) feel enough as we are. And so that's like all of these tools that you're offering and this beautiful triad, I love it, right, are all about um, helping helping ourselves get to a place Mm -hmm. of where we're truly starting to live our own lives Right. According to our own needs and desires and our own rules, instead of living the ways that we're told we're supposed to live, which often just make us feel shittier about ourselves. Right. That sovereign place. Yes, that sovereign yes. place. We are we are sovereign of, of our own land, of our own body, of our own minds and minds and spirits. Right. That uh, gives us that space to claim to claim our space in the world, right? To kind of arrive and just, you know. I'm here and this is the space I'm claiming and I'm not apologizing for it right I'm embracing it I'm in, I'm celebrating it yeah. Um, yeah absolutely and um and even you know deciding amongst you know sort of maybe what yeah, you talked about in infor- you know taking information in and thinking about maybe what is true or um and, and I'm also thinking too sometimes there are a few paths that could you know, um, have potential or, you know, different truths that might um, Mm -hmm. work, but which one is right for us, right? And um, especially when uh, things around food come to mind, well, any decision, food, exercise, but um, uh, like, you know, we, we hear how bad, say, caffeine is for us. For some people, they can, you know, take in coffee and they're fine, whereas somebody else, I mean, it's just so individual, right? Mm -hmm. And um, just allowing that space of, um, well, this works for you here to make this decision around, you know, uh, running every day for five miles works for you. And that's great. But this is the the movement that works for me or the, the self-care that works for me. Yeah. yeah and, and not and, and not placing any judgment right. on things. Right. Like we get the judgment from the outside and then. We also give the judgment back to ourselves from from the inside, right? So it often right. that's that internalizing, right? Uh huh. Yes, which we want to reverse that process. Yes, ten. It tends to be a twofold process, and a lot of the time, it is an unconscious process, right? Again, so coming back and thinking about the awareness <laughs> and that mindfulness. Mm-hmm. To be able to spot those moments and those times mm-hmm. when we're shaming and blaming ourselves, right? Or when we're believing the shame and blame that someone else is putting on us. The unconsciousness, I think, makes it even more sort of dangerous or potentially harmful because we don't even recognize that, um, like, as you're saying, that there could be another way to be or think um it just uh, that that internalization makes it feel like this is just this is just normal this is just how it, it's it's an uncontested truth so if i if i really uh internalize that belief that say fat bodies are inherently unhealthy I, i'm not even going to think to try to unpack that or challenge it because it's 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 buried so deep as just 
common sense or just uh, you know an uncontestable truth that is just going to going to sit there, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, that's why it's just so important to be uh, able to wake up to these other potentials and then do that challenging work because it's uh, not easy because there's many forces uh, against often that externalizing that we want to do to, uh, you know, take that uh, belief that's been buried, that unhelpful belief that's been buried deep and shake it up and, and toss it sort of back out where it belongs, mm-hmm. right? To recognize that there are forces that are shaping these ideas that we have about ourselves. Yeah. yeah, I love, I've been talking to a few folks lately about um, this analogy that Emily Nagoski uses in her book, Come As You Are, where she t- she talks about um, um, us being kind of like gardens. Okay, yeah. And as as we as we are raised and we grow up and we're socialized, um, the the world around us plants <coughs> things in our garden. Right. All of these lessons, these beliefs, values, all sorts of stuff, um, and a lot of these uncontested truths, right? right. Um, and uh, and so she talks about, you know, once you get to a certain place in your life, you have um, the autonomy and the ability to be able to kind of take stock of what's in your garden mm-hmm. and um, kind of bit by bit choose and decide what, um, what, what's there that's supporting you, um, what might need to be uprooted, mm-hmm. and if there's anything that needs to be kind of planted back in its place, or maybe you just need to leave that spaciousness there. Um, and I just love that and now it, it makes it a little more tangible for me in terms of like, oh, yeah, right. There were all these things that I learned before I um, really had those critical thinking skills available to me to be able mm-hmm. to say, like, mm-hmm. oh, well, I don't know. I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> that is a really powerful metaphor. Definitely. I really like it and um, really resonate with what you're saying, Dana, in terms of it gives me it gives you a way to sort of think about what are the what are the things that i've gathered into my sort of my little sphere of myself over the years and um yeah what is helpful what is supporting me and and potentially what could we weed out of there right yeah, exactly yeah. and i think of for me the um the externalization process mm-hmm. of a lot of this stuff it, for me, I I really it's it's an unlearning process. Mm. Yes, a big huge part of it, right? Yeah, and and to do that, we need to um, have opportunities to clearly see what it is that we have learned. Like, what are the the learnings and beliefs that are driving our actions? Right. And bring often um, what is unconscious conscious. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, that's often where some of these practices of, say, mindfulness and meditation and slowing down and reflection can support that kind of a thing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and I'm interested um, if you if you'd like to share a little bit. Um, since you've kind of embarked on, um, this path to healing your relationship with your body, um, what are, what are some of the ways in which, um, your life, your life has changed that, um, you maybe didn't anticipate or just, you know, what, what's, what's different on the other side of some of that for you? Um, I'll answer that by saying really quickly first that um, one thing that maybe hasn't changed because I I do think we fall into a trap of thinking when I do this work that I'll come to a place of um, never feeling angst or uncomfortableness about my body. Um, And then unfortunately when we do, we feel like we're failing in in the journey. Mm -hmm. So, So, you know, even after many years of doing this, I certainly like everybody else have sort of my ups and downs um, in terms of, um, 
my relationship with my body, but I, but granted, I do feel my ups and downs instead of sort of being like this or a little more, a little more even keel. Um, but what, one thing that I have found, um, I think my relationship actually with, with food and exercise has really shifted in a way that I really um, am appreciative of and I feel a lot more relaxed about. And it's sometimes hard to put into words, um, but I find that I'm able to kind of navigate um, these choices around wellness um, from a place of less panic. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it feels a little more just sort of, um, yeah, a place from less panic. Um, and one way I often think of it is that I'm not always about to embark on a big pro like thing, right? Whether it's, because um, before when I was uh, thinking about exercise or food, it would be like a big project that I'm going to launch onto, right? Um, and something I was going to start and would have, you know, I'm starting this uh, exercise plan and, and it sort of had an end point of maybe looking or feeling a different way. Mm -hmm. That's a it felt like always a lot of pressure, always looming yes. over me that would cause me to have, uh, it would interrupt a positive relationship with movement for me. So I have found that I've been able to ease that relationship and that I do different things. Uh, sometimes the movement that I do shifts with the seasons. Um, and, I'll, and I'll try different things in a more experimental way. Mm -hmm. uh, different type of yoga class or wh whatever whatever it is um but I'm not entering these things with a sense of panic or um pressure right right because, because I feel like when we enter them from that place mm -hmm. we're we're already looking at like we've got a plan for the desired outcome exactly yes so letting go of the possible future body is often a phrase that that I've used has been just such um, such a, a, a release in terms of how I approach in my relationship with uh, self care activities now, um, and uh, I, it's maybe a little bit more challenging with food um, just because sometimes wading through all the nutritional information can spark those feelings of. Of, of anxiety, but um, but uh, those more gentle nutrition approaches where uh, you sort of acknowledge that nutrition plays a role, but you don't let it um, cause you distress <laughs> or, or anxiety uh, is is really helpful. So I guess I guess that's what I'm trying to say is just um, a change for me has been a more uh, relaxed and enjoyable relationship with uh, movement and other self-care activities where there's not as much pressure on those things. And um, then I find that just to be more sustainable. Like, uh, you know, sometimes in the summer, I tend to gear up and do a little more cardio type stuff. And um, what I've found when I don't attach a particular outcome to it, um, I'm actually able to sustain it more, right? Yeah. It's like, I've been doing this for four weeks and, I haven't dropped X amount of pounds. Well, that's okay. I'm feeling good, right? So I'm good. Yeah. Right. I I'm not then demotivated by those expectations that then don't come to fruition, and so you just kind mm -hmm. of throw in the towel and say, "Well, you know, to hell with it. It's not working." Mm hmm. So the relaxed relationship has, for me, meant just sort of uh, more ability to respond to my body and be more consistent with those self care practices. And so I'm curious if that, so having a little bit more of that relaxation in those specific areas of your life, has that opened the door for more kind of general overall relaxation and more flexibility in your life? I'd like to think so. I would. Part of it is um, <laughs> just sort of, aging i think there's you know some some that comes with with that just the uh, um those that um feeling more just at ease but um i do think that those little the tendrils of um uh, being more at ease definitely 
Um, I don't um, feel like in, in the past, my relationship with my body, um, the example I often use is um, when I was in my 20s, I was in theater school um, as a theater major. And, uh, you know, I had dreams of, you know, uh, acting and being on stage. And definitely my relationship with my body held me back from taking those risks. It's a very vulnerable thing to put yourself mm -hmm. out on stage. And um, and now, now here I am in middle life and I do feel, you know, I don't feel that that my relationship with my body holds me back from pursuing the things that I want to pursue, for sure. So. Right. That's quite, quite a, quite a blessing, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it allows you to live more life. Yeah, and again, not that I'm completely free of neuroses or angst or all of those kinds of things, but it's um, uh, definitely, um, definitely been 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 lessened and mm -hmm. uh, brings me to a more a more even keel for sure. And when I do have maybe, um, you know. Um, uh, a moment or a, a not feeling good about myself. Uh, I don't know whether sometimes, you know, a, if a photograph is challenging or, or whatever th that and slip back into those old patterns, I find I have the ability to want to recognize what's happening. And so that's that mindfulness piece. Mm -hmm. Show myself compassion, right? And, um, which uh, then supports me in moving out of that downward spiral and back into recognizing then the discernment comes in and I remember, oh yes, right? These are the messages that um, <coughs> are being uh, sold to me from the, you know, the, um, the, the patriarchal consumer's culture, right? Mm -hmm. this, isn't, this isn't what I know and believe in my heart. Right, you can get those three things working together, and and uh, able to ride those ride those waves with more ease. Yes, and not you know not 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 attach to or get hooked by those those thoughts anymore. Right, I I'm totally with you. I don't think that there's something that ever goes away. Right, like we we not in this culture anyway. No, exactly. exactly. Um, unless we were able to really just seclude ourselves, and uh, you know, <laughs> yes. I think uh, we'd have to, you know, not listen, not see, not interact with the outside world in order Absol to absolutely, absolutely, and because you know that isn't our reality. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's really these these tools that you're sharing that allow us to um, not get hooked by those I don't know what happened there uh, okay. not get hooked by those outside ideas mm -hmm. and those external pressures and standards and norms and things like that mm -hmm. um, and to stay true to our own experience and what it is mm -hmm. that um, mm -hmm. yeah that we believe and that we uh, we want to walk towards. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I'm conscious of the time. So I'd just like to ask if there's anything else that you would like to share before we tell folks how to find you and uh, and where you're at. Is there anything else that you'd like to touch on? Yeah. That we didn't? I guess like we're talking about journalizing and, and um, discernment and critical thinking. Um, as I was, you know, gathering my thoughts for our chat together, um, one one tool and one exercise I might suggest to people that I found really helpful in terms of building that critical thinking piece when it comes to my relationship or our relationship with our bodies is um, exploring uh, a bit of a timeline on uh, beauty and body ideals. Mm. And, um, there's actually a few nifty videos that have been produced over the years where, you know, where they, you know, they dress the women up in all the different time periods and, and show the different sort of body and beauty types. Um, and I have found uh, when I reflect on those and uh, maybe, you know, find my own images of what ideals were and reflect on what's going on in the world, especially around women's rights um, alongside that it it really helps to kind of open your mind to thinking about how much um how we feel about our body is shaped by 
um, cultural influences, which I find to be really helpful in that sort of externalizing piece because it's so easy for us to stay in that feeling that, oh, well, the, whatever the current ideal is now, that's that's normal, again, on that deep level. So that if we deviate from that at all, we feel like we're abnormal. Yeah. Uh, when really, you know, what's normal is uh, really open to being shifted and changed by the political and cultural winds. So I found that to be just such an affirming process that um, it's just a little something to, to offer out there as a, a self exercise is uh, kind of exploring what have been the beauty and body ideals mm -hmm. and uh, seeing, you know, what can you think about all those different time periods in terms of what's happening in the world and what might have, you know, shaped those to be the particular ideals at that time. Just to be yeah, there. exactly. The ideals at that time to benefit the agenda of yeah. a select few, right? Yeah. 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 And I know that um, Naomi Wolf in her book, the beauty myth as well. Yes, yes. I know when you call. That definitely got me, you know, thinking about that. Another great one is uh, Fat Shame by uh, Amy Farrell. Oh, cool. Um, she does a lot of really interesting exploration uh, of, of that. So, um, you know, awesome. A couple that I had there. And that's, uh, that's all I had to say. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And um, for those of you who are here with us or listening to the replay, um, I just want to let you know that you can find Sydney uh, on Instagram and Facebook, Embracing the Body Divine. And she's on Twitter as well, uh, which is The Body Divine, correct? And then um, your website is um, embracing the body divine. Is it? Um, it's actually just Sydney Bell. Oh, Sydney Bell. Sorry, I've got it here. Yes, SydneyBell.ca, and um, she is here in Kitchener Waterloo. Um, and do you do virtual sessions as well? I do. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And um, I am so grateful that you agreed to be here and share your time, your story and your experience with us. Um, for those of you out there, we are going to be back um, next Wednesday, kicking off our December um, sessions. We're going to be chatting with a uh, few folks and one local another one from the states and australia i believe uh and our um, body trust core element for december is going to be look and listen to yourself with kindness and curiosity mm, beautiful yeah i love that one again bringing in the the self-compassion and the mindfulness mm. there right mm -hmm. absolutely all of these threads. So thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. If you're listening to the replay, thanks so much. And thanks for all the comments. We will be here again next week. Take care. Bye.